SpaceX has made reusable rockets the standard for getting things into space today, thanks to their cost-effectiveness and reliability. And honestly, no one seems to be following this trend more closely than China. Recently, the country unveiled two new reusable rocket concepts. What's particularly interesting is that one of them bears a striking resemblance to SpaceX's latest fully reusable stainless steel rocket, while the other is designed with a focus on ultimate performance and cost effectiveness. So let's take a closer look at these new contenders and see what sets them apart. The first rocket has the English name Glacier One, developed by Arctech, business name Stargrid Technology Beijing Co. Ltd. The company said they follow the path of don't be a follower of technological iteration, aim directly at the ultimate solution for commercial spaceflight. According to them, the global launch vehicle technology route is currently shifting toward medium to large reusable solutions. Based on a decade of industrial chain buildup in China's commercial aerospace sector, Stargrid Technology says it's taking the lead by proposing a low-cost, high-capacity, starship-style solution to meet future space economy needs. Yeah, what they're talking about is basically SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy, and you can obviously see some similarities between the two vehicles. The rocket will be around 92 to 93 meters tall, 5 meters in diameter, and weigh about 1,100 tons at takeoff. The body will mainly be made of stainless steel and will be powered by a full-flow staged combustion engine using liquid oxygen and methane with a reusable first stage. Like Starship, it has two stages that separate using hot staging during ascent. It'll use a total of 10 engines, one on the second stage and nine on the first, to lift its 1,080,000 kilogram fully fueled mass into orbit. Arctec says Glacier 1 can carry 42,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit when fully expended, or 32,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 24,000 kilograms to sun synchronous orbit when the first stage is reused. The company hopes that ultimately, the launch cost per kilogram can be reduced to the level of 10,000 yuan, creating the largest reusable commercial carrier rocket in China. And as if it's not already similar to Starship, just take another look at the concept image of the rocket. It almost looks like they just photoshopped their design over a picture of Starship. To power the giant rocket, Arctech is developing some incredibly powerful engines called Mammoth One. Visually, it looks strikingly similar to SpaceX's Raptor engine. But it's not just the look. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine that burns liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. Among the various approaches for LOX slash methane engines, the full-flow staged combustion cycle is widely considered the top-tier choice for next-generation liquid engines, thanks to its high efficiency, high thrust, and excellent combustion stability. But here's the thing. It's also extremely hard to pull off. Only a few companies and institutions around the world have managed to get it working in actual hardware. Even SpaceX, during Raptor's development, had to blow up a bunch of engines and melt more than a few combustion chambers before they got it dialed in. And even now, every time they want to upgrade it to a higher performance version, they pretty much have to go through that painful process all over again. So, it's genuinely interesting to see how the Chinese team plans to tackle this beast of a technology. That said, Mammoth One isn't designed to power something quite as massive as Starship, so its performance numbers are a bit more modest. At sea level, it can generate 163 tons of thrust with a specific impulse of 326 seconds, which brings the Glacier One liftoff thrust to around 1,467 tons. A vacuum-optimized version of the engine is expected to produce 177 tons of thrust with a specific impulse of 354 seconds. To support reusability, the engine is designed to throttle between 40% and 110% of its rated thrust. The company has already started work on Mammoth 1. On September 1st, they completed a pre-combustion chamber fluid atomization test. This test is a big deal. The oxygen-rich pre-burner needs to burn a highly oxygen-rich propellant mix inside a very confined chamber, and then produce stable, uniform hot gas to drive the oxygen-rich turbopump. Achieving this isn't easy. The combustion organization and secondary mixing process in such an environment is technically very difficult. 
This liquid atomization test marked a major step from theory to real-world engineering. The technical team evaluated multiple designs for the gas liquid injector inside the oxygen-rich preburner and used the test data to optimize injector performance, support nozzle multiphase flow simulations, and guide further R&D work. The successful test not only provided a foundation for fine-tuning the injector design, but also validated the accuracy of their simulation models, boosting both the confidence and predictive power of their design tools. To tackle the extreme complexity and tight coupling of subsystems in a full-flow staged combustion engine, the company says it has developed a suite of engineering solutions. After detailed reviews and discussions with senior industry experts, the Mammoth One system design passed its technical review in the first half of this year. The next steps are component testing and squeeze ignition work, planned for later this year. Of course, to develop a rocket this large, a substantial amount of funding is going to be needed. As of August 21st, Arctech says they've secured tens of millions of yuan, which is at least 2.8 million US dollars, in an angel funding round. But let's be real, for a launch vehicle the size of Glacier 1 and an engine as complex as Mammoth 1, that's just the beginning. They're going to need a lot more. And getting that kind of money is usually not easy. But Arctech seems to be pulling it off, probably because the people behind the company are no small deal. The founding team of StarGrid Technology mostly comes out of Tsinghua University, one of China's top schools. Their chief technology officer, Zhang Lu Ye, got into Tsinghua back in 2007 thanks to his physics Olympiad performance. After graduation, he committed himself fully to China's space program. He now has over 10 years of aerospace experience, combining a strong theoretical background with hands-on work across various parts of the industry. Right now, StarGrid technology, or Star Shuttle technology, as their internal tech team is sometimes referred to, has built up an R&D and manufacturing team of over 60 people. More than 90% of them hold a master's degree or higher, and on average, they each have over a decade of experience in aerospace research, engineering, and development. Their capabilities span everything, from design and development, to testing, assembly, and launch. It's not just academic brain power. They've got solid engineering experience, too. They're also trying to combine modern intelligent manufacturing methods with traditional aerospace production quality standards, essentially blending new school thinking with old school precision. The next company is WeLight. Full business name, Glimmer Navigation Beijing Aerospace Technology Co. Limited, which just a few weeks ago revealed the design of its partially reusable Weiguang-1 rocket. The company stated that the Weiguang-1 adheres to the first principles of aerospace design, aiming for ultimate performance and cost-effectiveness. By seamlessly combining an extremely lightweight design with a high-specific impulse engine, it significantly improves the rocket's payload efficiency. To achieve this extremely lightweight design, Weiguang-1 has identified carbon fiber composites as the optimal material for core components such as rocket segments, tanks, fairings, and structural supports. The design integrates advanced thermoplastic slash thermoset carbon fiber placement techniques with continuous fiber 3D printing to dramatically reduce structural weight. Carbon fiber composites have been used in liquid rockets abroad, with diameters ranging from 1.2 meters to 5.4 meters, and have successfully completed numerous flights, including Rocket Lab's Electron, Firefly Alpha, and Europe's Ariane 6. Rocket Lab's 7-meter diameter Neutron rocket is also under development and has completed key testing milestones. Waylight stated that Weiguang has achieved a significant breakthrough in the research and development of carbon fiber composite rocket structures by employing modified, high-performance, low-temperature epoxy resin and advanced carbon fiber materials. They have successfully completed the fabrication and rigorous cryogenic testing of 1.4 meter and 3.35 meter diameter carbon fiber tanks. Key performance indicators, including liquid oxygen compatibility, cryogenic sealing and evaporation rate have met all design requirements. 
Weiguang No. 1 is the first all-carbon fiber composite rocket in China. As for the configuration and scale of the rocket, it adopts a first stage plus upper stage setup with a rocket diameter of 3.8 meters, a total length of about 60 meters, a takeoff mass of 350 tons, and a load factor of up to 3.14%. The fully fueled weight comes in at 350,000 kilograms, reflecting the company's focus on ultimate performance and cost effectiveness. In terms of payload capacity, when the first stage is reused, the rocket can carry 9,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, or 7,000 kilograms to sun synchronous orbit. When fully expendable, it can deliver 11,000 kilograms to LEO and 9,000 kilograms to SSO. Powering this lightweight yet high-performance rocket are 11 Huaguang-1 engines on the first stage, each generating 42 tons of thrust for a combined liftoff thrust of 450 tons. The upper stage uses a single vacuum-optimized variant of the same engine, producing 52 tons of thrust. The Huaguang-1 is designed to operate using a full-flow staged combustion cycle, burning liquid methane and liquid oxygen, methalox, to maximize performance. The engine utilizes metal 3D printing, enhancing manufacturing reliability while further reducing weight. Again, that is all this rocket is about. Structural weight reduction is a key focus of the overall design particularly for the upper stage, where every kilogram of weight saved translates directly into a kilogram of valuable payload. According to WeLight, the Huaguang-1 engine can ignite more than 20 times, enabling multiple restarts of the upper stage. This supports advanced mission profiles such as ballistic gliding, which can add 200 to 500 seconds of gliding time to increase payload capacity by 1 to 2 tons as well as multi-satellite deployments across different orbits. The Weiwang-1 also features what the company calls an intelligent upper stage. This stage can restart and change orbits multiple times, allowing it to flexibly deploy satellites at different orbital altitudes within a single mission. Through repeated ignitions and orbit adjustments, satellites with varying altitudes or similar inclinations can be precisely inserted into their target orbits in a single launch. After completing its mission, the final ignition enables active passivation and deorbiting of the upper stage, ensuring it burns up during re-entry, a deliberate effort to fulfill space environmental protection responsibilities and reduce orbital debris. This is why the Weiwang-1 is considered partially reusable, in contrast to SpaceX's Starship, which aims for full reusability by catching both stages using the Mechazilla launch tower system. So far, WeLight has also raised tens of millions of yuan to pursue the initial development of its launch vehicle. They have also completed cryogenic tests on carbon fiber propellant tank domes after producing a number of test tanks. The core advantage of carbon fiber reinforced plastic, CFRP, lies in its exceptionally high specific strength and specific modulus. Its strength and stiffness to weight ratio far exceeds that of metals. However, the performance of CFRP is highly dependent on the matrix material, the resin. The resin binds the carbon fibers together, transfers mechanical loads, and maintains the shape and structural integrity of the component. Only high-performance resins can fully unlock the potential of carbon fibers, enabling tank structures that are significantly lighter than traditional metal tanks, such as those made from aluminum-lithium alloys.